It's okay to be affected by the passing of someone you didn't know personally. And someone's passing, part of you can pass too, part of your childhood. We all might remember where we were when he had 81, with that trip you took to the game with your parents where he didn't flinch when Barnes checked the ball, or how every time you threw out a piece of paper, you yell, Kobe! I remember how Kobe's Instagram page recently turned into a love note for his daughters. It's all part of life. To be affected by someone's passing is calm passion in the most pure form, which is to say, to suffer with quite literally. And in that way, we think of Vanessa and Natalia and Bianca and Capri and the Alto Belli, Chester, Zobayan, and Mauser families. We walk with them in their suffering. We share their path. It's in this way we carry forward Gigi, whose story was just being told. It's in that way we carry all we have lost. Because the fact is, no one's path is theirs alone. No one's life served one purpose. Kobe Bryant, again, exceptional in this regard, in the ways he united people, encouraged people, provided a mentality, the way his life had complexity and tribulations. We consider his death and his life as we speak of the fullness of it and all those who were part of it. This is grace to amplify the best of ourselves. You can't live a life untouched by grief or tragedy. There are feelings you never want to feel, you never forget, but they are feelings you must give voice to. It might be the best tool we have to process. I heard it said by some, it feels worse today. It's a key point in recovery. It doesn't get better with time, it gets better with time and work. So consider letting your work be in how you voice your feelings and talk about other people, talk about people's lives in full, carry forward their spirit. Most importantly, be with the ones in your life and allow them, even in loss, to always be with you. We lost our only Kobe Bryant this week. There will never be another. First person I ever talked to in the locker room was Kobe Bryant. He must have seen how scared I was because he invited me to speak with him. His kindness stood out to me because fear didn't seem to be something he could personally relate to. The hallmark of his career and life was fearlessness, his most Jordan-esque quality. He declared for the NBA draft at a time where perimeter players didn't make that leap. Those air balls in the 97 playoffs came because somebody had to shoot and the kid was man enough to try. His riff for Shaquille O'Neal seemed silly, but Kobe was too confident and ambitious to pretend to be second fiddle when he'd become a leading man, to proceed as if he could not win a championship without the big man. He dared to rap as a kid from Italy at a time when Allen Iverson looked more like hip-hop, willing to battle in hotel lobbies at the first hint of a challenge. Dwight Howard once relayed a story about talking to Kobe about shooting free throws, saying how he got nervous about missing. Kobe's advice? Shoot a thousand free throws. Because if you shoot a thousand free throws, you're still going to miss some. The failure was nothing to fear. After retirement, Kobe's fearlessness remained. He poured himself into his daughter's AAU basketball team. He won an Oscar as a film producer. He became an unlikely sensei to young players looking for guidance. He was prepared for and excited about whatever came next, making it doubly tragic that there's nothing left. Pablo, how will you remember Kobe Bryant? As one of the greatest characters we've ever had in sports, and we were talking about this yesterday, texting each other, we were both shook up by this in ways that were kind of jarring. And for me, I would not consider myself a fan of Kobe Bryant. I appreciated him, but I was not a stan of his. Let's say that. But why do I miss him? That's kind of the question that's been echoing through my head, and I realize it's because basketball is my favorite sport, it's basically my favorite TV show, and this guy, Bo, for all of the heroism and the villainy, I'm going to miss having him as the central character, and I was expecting to have him for decades more. Yeah, what I think is easy to lose sight of is that he's been here forever, man. Like, I was thinking about it. He graduated from high school the year before I did. To me, he was the first guy that was a high school player that we knew of as a high school player. We knew who he went to the prom with. And then he gets drafted by this glamour franchise, and he's immediately in the rotation on a team that matters. Shaq had just gotten there. And so we grew up with him in a way that we didn't even really grow up with LeBron because there's a level of protection around LeBron. We're only going to find out but so much. We saw warts and flaws with Kobe in a way that made it such that we went through things with him, like Lakers fans in particular. They went through ups and downs with him that most people don't go through with a superstar in general, and they normally don't do it when a guy starts off as a kid. And so what I realized in watching this was he had been such a part of my life without me even realizing it. Me as somebody who was not at all a stand in the way that you described, I realized, though, there was a central respect that I had for him for watching him over this time because it was impossible to watch somebody go about their craft in the way they did. You may have criticized the way he did it at times, but the intensity that went with it, that was something that you could knock, right? 
you wish that you could care enough about being good at something mm. as much as Kobe Bryant cared about being good at basketball. He was engaging on every level as a player due to the artistry that you described, due to the willpower you described, but also as a guy who just said stuff. He was hilarious. He was smart. He was someone when he stood up on a podium or took a microphone and began to talk, I wanted to know what he was going to say. Not because I was going to agree with all of it, but simply because what came out of his mouth tended to have a perspective and a worldview that was, quite honestly, pretty unique and pretty defiant. So those ingredients, Bo, plus the fact that he was just this famous, I mean, one of the things that was weird yesterday was just walking through the street and you don't have this experience very often, but it felt like a natural disaster in the sense that everybody seemed to be talking about the same thing. And communal experiences like that, they're just kind of rare at this point, but this is the sort of magnitude of a figure who can bring everybody kind of together. The thing is, when you're the man in LA, you're the man to the people that are the man to you. Your heroes wind up viewing somebody like Kobe as a hero, because the one unifying thing in that fractured place is the Lakers, right? Mm. And this guy is Mr. Laker in a way that is different than Magic Johnson or anybody else because of the length of time, because of the way it went. So it all winds up then being magnified to where everybody looks up and says, damn, Kobe Bryant is not here anymore.